Hey guys, Ben Pierce the Rosa Tracker. Today we're going to talk to you about something that happened on Earth, which I know is something that we normally don't talk a lot about, but I think you guys will find this one interesting. As I'm sure most of you guys are aware, about 66 million years ago the dinosaurs died, and the basically theory proven fact that caused that is an impact that happened off of the coast of Mexico in the Gulf of Mexico. And it's pretty much accepted at this point in time. The crater there is rather large. It's called the Chicxulub, which I'm probably going to wildly pronounce. Sorry, mispronounce. It um, killed the dinosaurs off. Well, there has been a recent discovery of a new crater off of the coast of Africa that is a fair bit smaller. It's called the Nadir Crater, Nadir Crater, which totally unrelated to anything this nadir is the word for essentially looking straight down in spacecraft so i found that name quite curious but it's related to a geological formation that has been called that for some period of time that i had never heard of so this impact crater is believed to have occurred within a million years of the event that killed the dinosaurs we don't know yet which one happened first. We don't even have it confirmed that this actually was an asteroid impact, and it may have been that they were even closer. We just don't know because in order to answer those questions, you have to drill into the site. And the paper has just barely been announced that this is even a possibility. In order to get funding to do that kind of stuff, you have to release the results and get people excited because it does cost a fair bit of money. But this paper has been drawing a lot of attention and I'm sure that they'll be able to get answers to these questions soon. At this point in time, I'll show an animation here that I found from YouTube, you link in the description below. It, the Americas were separated from Africa. Um, South America and Africa separated about 110 to 120 million years ago. So. They were about half of their present day distance apart. And remember that the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs hit in the Gulf of Mexico. So, you know, they were a little bit closer. Right now, modern day, they're about 8,500 kilometers, which is 5,500 miles roughly. And back in those days, they were only 5,500 kilometers. So maybe 3,500 miles. This is what I get for doing math off the top of my head. but. In any case, they were closer. Um, it's still too far apart for them to have most definitely been a impact from the exact same event that would have broken up. It's fairly common for asteroids to break up when they are approaching an object under what's called the Roche limit, which it's um, a few hundred miles above. Essentially, an object can't stay together. The, the self-gravity of Earth is greater than the gravity of a small object at that point in time, and they're gonna fall apart. But it would have had to have been much closer. And that kind of stuff happens with impact craters all across the solar system that we see. But these still may have been related. It, we don't know for a fact any of this, right? They found this by using topological studies looking for oil um, this particular area has shale, and if in fact it was an impact crater, that shale would have caused a large amount of carbon to be released into the atmosphere, probably some methane. It could have had some fairly significant effects that may have raised the temperature for a few years. Um, the prediction is, is that it was a 400 meter across rock that would be, you know, thousand feet, uh, 1500 feet, something like that. So a good size. This is about the size of the asteroid Bennu, by the way. It's estimated that something this size hits the Earth about once every 700,000 years, although we don't really have that accurate of a model as to how often it happens. It would have caused a tidal wave of about 500 meters. Now, as you get further away from the site, that tidal wave is going to shrink down in size, and this did hit off the coast a fair ways. So Africa likely got a fairly significant chunk. 
South America was still close, and the paper said that South America had a five meter wave according to their models. This, you know, would have caused a fairly significant amount of damage. And Africa would have been worse. For some reason, the paper didn't actually say how big the wave would have been in Africa, but I think we can assume that it would have been a fair bit bigger than five meters because it was a lot closer. Um, one of the interesting things with tidal waves they are formed essentially with water pushing away but there's kind of a suction that happens back underneath and it's one of the, the big effects you can see with this is when a tidal wave is coming in the water will be withdrawn and so you'll actually see a lot more of the beach immediately before the wave hits well that same kind of curvature that happens with these ocean waves which all pretty much all ocean waves do something like this, will cause the wave to go out and then a huge amount of water to come back underneath. And within a fairly short period of time, it will kind of slam it in and it will create a peak. And because their water depth is a lot less, it's going to carry with it a lot of sediments. And so after the impact, within a matter of less than two minutes, it was covered already in sediments. The way that they spotted this is looking at the, the data, they could see that there is a huge discontinuity that has this big peak in the center. It has a rim around it, which is very characteristic of what's called complex craters. We see these all over the solar system. We see them on Earth, although it's pretty hard to find craters on Earth for a number of reasons the land moves around so much and the atmosphere makes it so that the small impact craters don't even happen. So it takes something pretty big and they're really just hard to see on Earth. So most likely an asteroid of this size impacting would have a fairly significant regional effect. You know, Africa and South America would have been pretty badly hurt from the tidal wave. It's not that likely that it would have a global effect. Um, other than possibly raising the temperatures, lowering the temperatures, something along those lines for a few years, but it's not going to have a massive, massive devastation like, you know, the impact would. Obviously, if this hit a city, that city would be having a really bad day. But as Earth is 73% water, it's far more likely it's going to hit in the water, and this is a pretty typical scenario of what an impact would happen. As I said, these could happen once every 700,000 years or so, roughly. The estimated energy from this was about 5,000 megatons, which is roughly equivalent to the world's nuclear arsenal. I don't have a great number on that, but it's in the same ballpark, plus or minus a factor of 10, right? But, you know, it's fairly close. If this was, in fact, an impact crater, the fact that it happened so close to the Chicxulub blub impact that killed the dinosaurs raises a lot of interesting questions. Uh, there are several possibilities. They could be totally unrelated. That does happen, especially if one of these impacts happens every 700,000 years and we just happen to you know, find one within a million years of the dinosaur impact. That's totally possible. But they could have been a binary system, which is what I had initially thought it was, um, where you know both the asteroid and and moon were headed on their course like uh, Didymus and Diddy Moon although I know it has a better name right now that the DART mission is going to impact fairly soon in the next month or two I can't remember the date but you know an asteroid like that if it hit the earth it would certainly cause an issue the theory that makes the most sense after having read the paper and I'll link to the paper in the description below is that it could have passed close to earth and it could have kind of broken it apart as will happen, but it didn't impact that particular time. Instead, it came back several years later and then impacted. And so this happened with the comet shoemaker Levy that impacted Jupiter uh, a number of years ago, but we had a satellite there that was observing and it was really pretty neat footage. The impacts from shoemaker Levy happened over the course of six days. Something like that could have happened. Another possibility, there likely was some kind of an impact in the asteroid belt. Maybe something broke apart and that caused a bunch of rocks to start to head 
towards Earth, and so they would be kind of cousins if something like that happened. And by studying this event and looking for other similar events on Earth and also on the Moon, we can get a sense of what was it that actually happened that led to the asteroid that hit the Earth and killed the dinosaurs. And, you know, it's kind of cool. I, I never really had thought that this kind of thing would happen. These events with binary related impacts are far, far less represented on Earth than they are on other celestial bodies such as Venus and even the Moon. And we know that there are a lot more binary asteroids out there. So it's just really, really hard to find these on Earth. You have to be looking deep underneath the ocean floor. This thing was covered in, I think, 400 meters of sediment. This crater is about a mile, almost a mile beneath the ocean floor, about 1.2 kilometers beneath the ocean floor by the time you take into account the sediments and the water that's on top of it. It's not very easy to find something underneath all of that. When we look at the moon, you can see the craters. You don't even need a telescope to see the craters on the moon. But on Earth, they're not so easy to find. I hope that we're able to get some more data on this, and I'll be sure to let you guys know if I hear anything more. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, and for all of you who follow and like and subscribe and do all of those things. Until next time, keep on tracking. Take care, guys.